<laughs> can it, the Kanish never stops, eh? Comrades are just on me, my knees. Fifty Shades of Grey, have you seen Cat's Pants? There's probably going to be a book about that sometime soon. Have you seen Cat's Pants with Fifty Shades of Grey? Really? Oh, Come on, that's man. That's too funny. That's Let's too take a funny. look at your Tuesday Top 10. The new improved Parmalat Fabulite fat-free yogurt. Today we're looking at the top 10 tell-all books. Now these are biographies and autobiographies about famous people that serve up giant slices of scandal. All right, the first one, act number 10. You never eat lunch in this town again. Julia Phillips, now this book is famous in Tinsel Town for having practically ended the career of its author. Now Julia Phillips was at first, was the first woman to win an Oscar for Best Picture as producer of The, of the Sting in 1974. She recounts the cocktail of drugs that she was on uh, on, on the night that her big, of, of her big win and then mocks many male Hollywood power players such as Steven Spielberg and Martin Scorsese as being a bunch of nerds who deliberately ostracized women in the industry. Now it took publishers lawyers, uh, publishers lawyers 14 months to approve the manuscript uh, for the publication and it quickly rocketed to number one on the New York Times bestseller list but ultimately Julia's career never recovered from this book. Ouch! Well, coming in at number nine, Steve Jobs, written by Walter Isaacson. Now, this biography was written at the request of Jobs by acclaimed biographer Walter Isaacson, a former executive at CNN and Time who has written best-selling biographies of Benjamin Franklin and Albert Einstein. Jobs said to have encouraged the people interviewed to speak honestly. Now, the result was that the book portrayed Jobs as a bit of a tyrant who often bullied colleagues publicly, supposedly to get the best out of them. Isaacson is not shy to show the embrace and aggressive side of Jobs as a key component that helped him achieve success. No, I shouldn't have listened. I'm still supposed to read that book. I bought it. I haven't read it yet. Oh, anyway, sorry. number eight, Captain in the Cauldron by John Smith. Now, John Smith's books, or his books, tells about his triumphs and failures as a bark captain, often dispelling various media-created myths. Now, the juiciest bit was probably when he referred to Luke, Luke Watson as having uh, a cancerous effect on the on the, on the bark team. Now, however, uh, most of the book is a, is a full praise of the sharks and the bark set up and uh, the people with which he played the most of his career. Interesting yeah. stuff. Kept it in the cauldron. Well, coming in at number seven, we have Life of the Party, a political press tart tells all. Now, this is by Lisa Barron, and in her political memoir, Barron shamelessly tells all about the frisky shenanigans behind the scenes with high-profile political conservatives, most famously Ralph Reed, former executive director of the U.S. Christian Coalition. She also confesses that her tryst with then-married or rather then unmarried Ari Fleischer, who went on to become George W. Bush's White House press secretary. Lots of debauchery in the corner offices of Washington in this book. At number six of our top ten tell-all books, Tom Cruise, an unauthorized biography by Andrew Morton. Now, Andrew, uh, author Andrew Morton wrote some frightening stuff about Tom Cruise, including that Katie Holmes actually had to audition for the status of Tom Cruise's girlfriend and won the part over other actresses. Can you bereave it? Now, the book also discusses details about Cruise's marriage to Minnie Rogers and Nicole Kidman, his relationship with Penelope Cruz, his couch jumping episode, of course, the, the infamous one on the Oprah Winfrey show, and his denouncement of Brooke Shields for relying on the Nazi science of psychiatry. Wow, can you believe it? Anyway, Morton consulted with a former senior uh, Scientologist who asserted that Nicole Kidman's lawyer um, had advised her not to publicly discuss Scientology or to speak out against it, even though she hated Scientology when, Cru when Cruz left her in 2000. So there must, must be like some underground yeah. threats going on there. You know Morton this. writes that Holmes joined Scientology in June of 2006 and agreed that if she or any of her children were ever to suffer mental or terminal illnesses, they must turn to Scientology treatment. Treatments. Wow, How crazy this is this? crazy. Absolutely crazy. It'd definitely a good read. Yeah. Now, coming in at number five, we have Bookie Wook by Russell Brand. Russell <laughs> Brand has written two books, My Bookie Wook and Bookie Wook 2. This time, <laughs> it's personal. Now, in Bookie Wook 1, taking place largely before he became known in the US, he tells of his troubled childhood his admiration of drugs and hooliganism, and how he was fired for arriving at work at MTV on September the 12th, 2001, dressed as Osama Bin Laden. Naughty stuff from Mr. Brand. <laughs> Number four, Life by Keith Richards. Now, Keith Richards' self-penned tale of rock and roll revelry is a no-holds-barred account of 50 years of life inside the Rolling Stones in the studio and on the road, from his meteoric rise to fame and the notorious drug busts to the women 
drinking, heroin addiction that made him famous. Keith puts it all in there. So definitely a very interesting read. Heavy. Well, coming in at number three, we have Oprah. Now, this unauthorized biography by Kitty Kelly, who has published takedowns of Jackie O, Frank Sinatra, and Nancy Reagan, tried to find the dirt on Miss Oprah herself. She accused Oprah of fabricating and sensationalizing the nature of her difficult childhood. She challenged the honesty of a relationship with longtime love Stedman Graham and <laughs> reputed dirt poor upbringing, upbringing in rural Mississippi and her rumored lesbian crushes on women such as Diane Sawyer and her best friend Gail. Oprah, of course, dismissed the book as lousy, malicious journalism, and most of the storm soon blew over. Yeah, I mean, we all believe Oprah, don't we? Of course. <laughs> At number two, Wolf of Wall Street by Jordan Balfour. Now, this New York stockbroker made millions in the early 90s selling so-called penny stocks to wealthy Americans before going to jail for fraud. Now, he built his own firm and amassed a fortune of hundreds of millions while living a crazy life filled with drugs, prostitution, and hair-raising uh, brushes with the law, and death that, or death that would make uh, for a good Hollywood story. So who knows, maybe somebody might just turn that book into, into a movie one day. Now, Balfour's story was the inspiration behind the film Boiler Room and is currently being made into another movie directed by Martin Scorsese with Leonardo DiCaprio starring as Wolf himself to be released next year. Wow, sounds exciting. And then coming in at number one, we have To The Point by none other than Herschel Gibbs. Now, in Herschel Gibbs's autobiography, he gives a blow-by-blow -blow, um, account of the Proteus dope smoking scandal in the Caribbean in 2001 including his allegation that teammate Daryl Cullinan blew the whistle on the culprits. He also attacked certain teammates such as Captain Graham Smith, A.B. de Villiers and Mark Boucher for having too much power in the Proteas setup. Now that's being to the point, I think. Oh, lekker Hershey. <laughs> we actually had him here when he launched the book, yeah. So those are our top 10 Tuesday that's tell right. all books. <laughs> I didn't see anything about my knees or Fifty Shades of Grey. You win. Anyway, time for us to go into an ad break. We'll be right back. The new improved Parmalat Fabulite fat-free yogurt.